All right, welcome back. Another day, another favorite of fractions. Uh, so today we're gonna do multiplying and dividing, which a lot of people find easier. Um, I suppose it's just a preference, but um, we don't have to do the common denominator thing, so a lot of people prefer to not have to do that, but to multiply and divide, we're going to do one of two things. So we're going to either, that was really sloppy, um, reduce and then multiply across. And actually it's reduce well, I'll go over that in a minute. I was going to write something else, but I think we're good there. Um, and then multiply across. Or you can do it the other way around. Goodness, I'm all over the place right now. You can multiply across and then reduce. My personal opinion is that this way is better and this one is harder. So I'll try to show you a couple of them to see, so you can see what I mean, but here's a relatively simple straightforward problem. So two-thirds times one-fourth. So again, I think the better version is to reduce first and then multiply across. And so we're really looking at reducing diagonally. So can I reduce a two and a four? So it's almost like if you were gonna have a fraction can I reduce that? Yes, I can divide by two, and I get one over two. So up here, the two becomes a one, and the four becomes a two. And then I would also want to look at three and one, but can't do anything there. So then I go across. One times one is one. Three times two is six. Okay. So to show you the other way, and this one, it really isn't that big of a deal to do the harder way, like I said, because the numbers are small. So two times one is two, three times four is 12, and then reduce second. I can divide both of those by two, and I get one sixth. So this one is relatively simple because again, the numbers are smaller, but when the numbers get a little bigger, it becomes a little more difficult to do the second version. So. Let's look at one of those. So three tenths times six over 13. So if we did it the hard way and multiplied straight across, you'd get 18 over 130. And then you'd have to reduce 18 over 130. And that just seems way too much work. So again, I don't like that. Let's again reduce diagonally. So three and 13, can't do anything there. Six and 10. So again, if you think of it as if it were a fraction, excuse me, um, I could 
again, divide by 2, and I get 3 over 5. So the 6 becomes a 3, and the 10 becomes a 5, and then we can multiply straight across. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 5 times 13, that might be a harder one to look at, but it is 65. And there's my answer. So you can see, you know, maybe dividing by 2 is what you would end up doing on the reducing um, if you did the harder way. And 18 divided by 2 is not too bad, but 130 divided by 2 can be a little bit tricky. All right, so dividing is really not all that different except for we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of having 5 over 12 divided by 5 eighths, we're going to have 5 twelfths, and I'm going to change it to multiply, and I'm doing the reciprocal, which just means flip it over. I never heard this until some former students told me, but there's a thing that somebody said, keep change flip. So I'm keeping the 5 over 12, I'm changing the divide to multiply, and I'm flipping over, which is another way of saying the reciprocal. Um, and then it's just the same problem that we did on the other ones. So 5 and 5, you know, we could reduce that and say, well, 5 over 5... I could divide both of them by 5, and I just get 1 over 1. So the 5s become a 1. And then do the same thing with the 8 and the 12. And to reduce that, I could divide both of them by 4, and I get 2 and 3. So the 12 became a 3, and the 8 became a 2. And then we multiply across, so the red numbers. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 1 is 3. And I've got it. So this part right here because of all the crossing out, can get a little bit like jumbled and you might lose track of a one or a two or something in there. So please like better to write a little bit bigger and space yourself out when you're doing your work so you don't lose some of those numbers. Because if you did all that and you accidentally forgot there was a three there and you put two over one, you know, you kind of did all this, the hard part and it just kind of didn't get paid off with getting the right answer. So going back to like the, the, the hard way, I guess, if you will. So we said, you know, we're gonna do five twelfths times eight over five, and we end up with 40 over 60, which that one's not too bad because of the zeros, but you can see the numbers are getting bigger. So if we got some weird numbers, you know, in there, you'd have to like, divide by 20, maybe that's not easy for some of you, but you would get two-thirds. So I still think the reduced diagonally, like we did, is easier. So let's look at one more. 8 fifteenths divided by 7 tenths. Okay, so remember we are going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to flip that over. OK, 
Okay, let me erase a little bit of that, get it out of the way. So then again, look at the diagonals eight and seven, can't do anything there. So on the last one, we were able to do both diagonals. It doesn't mean you have to. Okay, but right there, 10 and 15, I can. I can divide by five. And I get two and three. So the 10 becomes a two and the five becomes a three. And multiply across, eight times two is 16. Three times seven is 21. So if you do the reducing part diagonally correctly, you will never have to reduce your answer at the end. It'll already happen in the middle of the problem. So there was, you know, this has nothing to do with any of the, pro the problems that we just did, but I think on the last one, we had to reduce an eight and a 12. So if you looked at that and said, oh, I can divide by two, and you got four over six, and then you worked out the rest of the problem, you would have to reduce at the end because you didn't reduce this all the way. It's not wrong. Four over six is the same as eight over 12, but you could have divided by two again. So the all the way reduced problem would be two thirds from eight to eight over 12. So sometimes you maybe don't see a certain number working a certain way so just, you know, if you can reduce again, go ahead, do it. You don't need to erase and start over. Just go, oh, I can keep going. Keep reducing, okay? All right, so again, make sure everything's reduced. If you get any improper fractions, so if you worked out a whole problem and you got, you know, 10 over 7 as the answer, remember that's fine. You, if you end up putting 1 and 3 over 7, 7 goes into 10 once, remainder 3, this denominator stays, that's fine, but you don't have to. The 10 over 7 is absolutely okay. All right, so email me any questions, use Parent Square any questions, um, and then check the school website for the answers. I'll post those at some point today. And then if you have questions tomorrow on the Zoom, we can go over them. All right, have a great day.